that they knew when those assets were being manipulated. And so by continuously monitoring the baseline state that they had instantiated for their, net, for their government network, they were able to quickly and resiliently respond to, uh, to that cyber attack. Um, they're also the home of the European Union IT Agency, home of our technology, key signature infrastructure, and the inventors of that, uh, of that technology. And they also drive many of the European Union uh, cloud steering standards and work with the European uh, uh, standards bodies on uh, data integrity and data authentication measures. In fact, a lot of the world comes to learn from Estonia on cyber, cyber security, and, uh, and cloud. Um, from a traditional approach perspective, so if you look at uh, kind of enterprise security, and in fact, uh, data center or, or cloud security, uh, the traditional model has really been, I'm just gonna put another box in the network. I'm gonna build a stronger perimeter. I'm gonna have a disparate sent uh, of sensors, whether those be firewalls, intrusion detection sensors, intrusion prevention systems, malware analysis systems, uh, and so on. And I'm going to, you know, trust in those sensors and those platforms to react, respond, and detect attacks against my network. Uh, the problem with that model is that you can never be 100% sure that the fence is actually working. You have no idea whether or not those sensors and those assets themselves have become exploited and are providing back to you the picture the attacker wants you to see. Uh, and so cloud computing has changed this paradigm even more. It's complicated the picture because uh, it means that the perimeter blurs. You don't know where your data is. You don't know who's accessing the data. You don't know whether or not your data is changing because there's no fundamental instrumentation at the uh, data level to provide, the, provide for that witness. Uh, and moreover, you know, as we've seen with, uh, you know, in the recent news with, with major da data breaches, whether you're talking, um, you know, uh, commercial companies, financial services partners, and so forth, 50% of electronic fraud is conducted by uh, insiders. Malicious insiders, those trust anchors that we rely on to provide those services and to enable those business activities for our use. Um, as we said, cloud pl uh, blurs the perimeter. Uh, you know, a lot of the criticism I get from multinationals and governments who are considering outsourcing large portions of their infrastructure or their data to cloud is from their perspective, uh, they are, are worried that I don't know, A, where my data is, uh, who's accessing it, has that data changed, and yeah, I'm signing that cloud service provider contract, I'm insuring those assets, but I have no way to transparently or visibly inspect whether or not that those controls that that service provider has said that they'll uh, place on my data and those assets that I consider critical are actually working. And in fact, the, uh, the value that Ericsson brings with their cloud platform is the ability to allow a company, an operator, or a multinational to independently verify whether or not that that service provider contract is actually in force and that all of the controls and that the data state and that those important assets that they've trusted to that outsource provider are in fact coherent. And again, you know, why the uh, traditional model doesn't work, um, I have a very unique uh, uh, position just from uh, my past experience in that applications, API, code, people will always have vulnerabilities. And if you make the assumption that at some point an application, that perimeter defense system, that intrusion detection box, that firewall is going to be hacked, whether it be it because of implementation-specific vulnerabilities or, in fact, because of a code flaw, at some point you have to assume that uh, that, that infrastructure will be breached. And, you know, one of the quotes that uh, uh, Jason's mentioned in the past is that you can't be perfect at preventing crime. You can't be perfect at essentially assuring that the thousands and the, the legions of hackers out there aren't going to attack your box, but what you can be is perfect at detecting crime. Right? If you have that fundamental empirical evidence, that instrumentation at the data level for those applications, those services, and those systems that are actually supposed to be running in a state that you at one point trusted. Right? Ernest & Young, uh, for those that are interested, generated a recent report on security and data integrity, highlights keyless signature infrastructure as a fundamental way to essentially baseline your network assets so you have confidence that at least in their deployed state that they haven't changed from that state. And that leads into audit and compliance and regulatory compliance for things like insurance and then reinsurance of those assets. And so why guard time? You know, at the end of the day, we solve the biggest problem in cyberspace. And that problem 
is data integrity and data quality. In 2014, um, the McKinsey Institute estimated that the cost of ineffective cybersecurity uh, by 2020 was going to exceed about $3 trillion. And if you look at uh, where this is going, by 2017, machine-generated data is going to exceed human-generated data on the Internet. And by 2020, there's going to be approximately 35 zettabytes of information available out there, right? And most of that information is going to be managed by machine-to-machine -machine connections. There's going to be a new API economy. And if we're going to actually trust those machines' interactions, those machine connections, we have to have a way to fundamentally instrument those assets and understand whether or not those assets are acting in accordance with the governance framework that we've, those rules that we've put in place. The only way that we can trust that message is that if those assets have empirical evidence that the data that they're, they're running on actually becomes its own witness and can prove out its own properties. There has to be a new level of instrumentation for those assets, and that's what Keyless Signature Infrastructure does. Uh, some of the design requirements early on for KSI that the Estonians basically took to heart is that one, and this is why this technology actually works at the scales required for cloud computing, is that you have to have a system that's scale free. The system should be able to sign and verify an exabyte and indeed a zettabyte per second. Trust free, the system shouldn't rely on key source, those trust anchors, those secrets which can be compromised and exploited. Uh, there should be no secret that actually allows you to basically manipulate the evidence of a signature. The evidence has to be portable. It can be verified even across different geographies, even across different boundaries, even if it's not connected or tied to the data itself. If you have a piece of data and you have a signature and you have the algorithm, you can independently verify that that, uh, that, that signature contribute or that piece of data actually contributed to the signature. It should be able to work in real time. Again, we're only good at doing incident response to save our important and precious assets that are stored in our network if we can actually respond quick enough. And to do that, we have to be able to detect, detect those changes uh, uh, quick enough. We have to be able to detect those changes in real time. And so by continuously monitoring the state of those assets, KSI allows you to do that real time verification. There has to be indefinite expiry. There's a whole new class of network attacks and cryptographic attacks using high performance computing and quantum computing that have been proposed in the future. And in the advent of those, uh, of those attacks, what happens is that a number of the fundamental algorithms that we rely on for like e-commerce on the internet begin to fall apart. But with KSI, those algorithms remain, or at least uh, uh, with KSI, your ability to actually withstand those attacks, even in the future, even with the advent of those new uh, high-performance computing attacks, uh, uh, still remains in place. Carrier grade, the system should be able to deliver at the uh, carrier grade levels that uh, uh, telecommunications or operators should expect, um, should operate it with five nines availability, and it should be able to uh, be available offline. You should be able to do verification local to your enterprise, even if your network connection is cut. And these are all the design requirements and the design features that are afforded uh, by KSI through Ericsson as a service provider. And I'm going to turn the, uh, the floor back over to Jason just to talk about uh, KSI and, and other cloud propositions within the stack. So okay. thanks, Jason. Yeah, thank you very much. And, yeah. and, and I think, you know, for, for us, it begins to start thinking around how, how do we build a cloud environment where, again, these, these, these pillars of, of driving the accessibility driving automation, driving governance, and having an entirely unique system and data center type of security model becomes really sort of key assets of, of the platform. And in particular, building a cloud environment that can really tackle you know, all three of the typical types of environments you see, meaning like you look at one of them as being mission critical environments, environments that if they do not work, the enterprise and the operator does not work but also being able to take those same things and make mission critical environments that are also very cost effective. So cost effective that they can be the underlying of cost centers. So really these types of you know, internal types of workloads. And then also because of that, that nature of being mission critical, but also low TCO, they can be used to drive infrastructure for very interesting sort of top line activities. We have a product effort across these things, of course, really centered, as I said, 
around accessibility, automation, governance, a very unique security model. This type of uh, if, if, if infrastructure is entirely, you know, along with our software-defined networking and, 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 and uh, activities there in the network space. I and mean, just like how I described how this whole transformation cycle works, services becomes a very, very critical part of this too. Um, and we really started thinking around a cloud that has data that you can trust and a system that you can trust, really about enabling the ability to run your business in real time. So not to make the trade-off between control and security versus innovation, but being able to achieve all of those types of things. I mean, in every sort of th thesaurus I've ever looked in, I look up something like control and I don't see innovation as the exact opposite word. Also built for the most demanding environments. And again, when you see these types of product inflections, it's usually built for a demanding environment means very expensive. But how do we start doing built for the most demanding mission critical environments, but also exceptionally reasonable TCOs on there? And then really sort of taking a lot of our experience <coughs> in that Ericsson's been responsible for globally deploying, you know, what is the most distributed uh, secure infrastructure in, in, in the world, and that's the one that connects, of course, all of the mobile phones globally, and taking all of the types of learnings we have there around global reach, scale, connectivity, uh, and just getting an infrastructure that, that just works. Maybe is that the last slide, or am I not supposed to hit the button? I guess that's the last slide. Thank you. Welcome back, Rima. And we got time back, yes. which is very Excellent. good. Okay, so.